following program is recorded content created by the Truth Network. It's Matt Slick Live. Matt is the founder and president of the Christian Apologetics Research Ministry, found online at CARM.org. When you have questions about Bible doctrines, turn to Matt Slick Live for answers. Taking your calls and responding to your questions at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Everybody, welcome to the show. It's me, Matt Slick. You listen to Matt Slick Live. If you want, you give me a call. All you got to do is dial 8 seven seven two zero seven two two seven six if on the other hand you want to email me you can do that by just emailing at carm or excuse me info at carm.org info at carm.org and um uh, put in the subject line put in let's see uh radio question or radio comment oh man yeah so you could do that all right okay and uh, let's see, we got three open lines, 877 I want to hear from you. Give me a call. Let's get on the air with Buxman. Welcome. You're on the air. Matt, I just want to say God bless you, brother, for your program two days ago now where okay. you shared your heart with the listeners of Matt Blick Live and the Truth Radio Network when you spoke of your abortion experience in your past. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I, yeah. it, it really helped me, Matt. And uh, I just want to say, brother, I share that same past. And I want to say this to all, first to all our lady listeners, You guys aren't the only ones who suffered with that choice. Believe it or not, there are some men among you that it affected them as well. So I want to speak to, if you wouldn't mind, Matt, you and I, speak to the men. And I know this is Valentine's Day, and what a a day. You know, this is a day of love. Um, I want to speak that God's love, brother, is available his healing brother is available just as it was me and your brother matt buskman and your brother matt so that's what i would like to uh to bring to the uh discussion matt well i appreciate that it is uh one of those subjects i don't like talking about and uh, for obvious reason and um all i can say is god is good and he's gracious and uh his forgiveness is incredible and that anybody and everybody uh, can find that forgiveness in him. Uh, he's just that good. And that's it. I mean, just turn your heart to him. Absolutely. Yeah. What I found in my, and I, Matt, I carried this for a long time and I kept it hidden. And I'll bet a lot of men are right now as they're listening yeah. to us right now on the radio. Um, let me tell you, brothers, please release it to the Lord. Talk to a trusted friend because a trusted friend sought me out. And he said, Busman, why are you so depressed? And he would follow me around work with his Bible. And he would teach all the, all the people that he worked with about the Lord. And his name was Lowell Beam. I'll never forget it. B-E-A-M, like, like a sunbeam. He brought light into my life, Matt. And he, I, I confess, I can't confess to the sage of a Christian. And this is the verse he took me to, Matt. He took me to Second Samuel, chapter 12, verse 23. And what's going on here is when David lost the baby uh, with Bathsheba. And Matt spoke of that sin with Uriah and how he tried to cover up his sin. Mm-hmm. And um, the baby ended up dying. And But the whole time, David was lamenting, and he was crying out to God, please don't let the baby die. Please don't let the baby die. To the point that his servants were very concerned about David's mental health, thought he was going to kill himself even at one point. So when he fought, when the little boy finally died, um, David went in, washed his face, worshipped and sat down to eat and the and the, uh, the servant says king david when the baby was dying you were a mess 
why are you okay now? Why are you back worshiping your God? And this was David's response. Verse 23 of chapter 12 of 2 Samuel. But now that he is dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him, but he will not return to me. Now, this brings tears to my eyes, Brother Matt, because I realize in God's economy, God's gracious, amazing love, I will see that child in heaven for eternity, brothers, even though I sinned greatly and made my girlfriend I forced her to have an abortion. I said, if you don't have this abortion, I am not going to be your boyfriend anymore. And she, as I was turning the car into the abortion clinic, Matt, she looked at me, and I believe Jesus was speaking through this woman. And I, neither one of us were Christians. Neither one of us were Christians. But she looked me right in my eyes, Matt, and she said this, do you really want to do this? And in my arrogancy and my sinful didn't care about nobody but me, myself, and I, I said, yep. And we went in, and she was just devastated. Yeah. So how long ago was this? I never lost that memory of that. How long ago was that? This was in the 90s, Matt. This was in the 1990s. All right. Well, I'm glad that you found... Like so many have forgiveness in Christ and what uh, what we've done. So it's a it's a good message, and yes, men need to hear about it as well. They're they're secretly suffering through a lot of it, and women don't realize it, and they're not probably not as suffering as much, but they're suffering, and it needs to be dealt with. They are. I I did, Matt. As God is our witness, I suffered. It made me angry. I didn't know where all my anger was coming from, and so dear Lowell come and ask me because I was really down and he goes what what tell me what's going on why are you so downcast Mm -hmm. and I I just felt so loved by this man and I just blurted it all out I blurted it all out so what did this dear man do he and his dear wife invited me to dinner and they made me a home-cooked meal Lowell read the Bible to me, and I just bawled I just bawled now I hadn't I wasn't with that that young lady Again, um, obviously this was years and years and years after, and I was just so moved by God's love through these dear, sage Christians, these older Christians who knew the Word of God okay. and who had love in their heart bigger than Kansas. Wow. Well, good. I'm glad. And, um, yeah, I'm glad. There's good people out there, and God uses them to have others be healed. So praise God for them. Well, I appreciate that, brother. I do. All right. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks, Matt, for your testimony. All right, man. Love God you guys. Bless. Okay. We'll see ya. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. All right. Let's get on with Evan from California. Evan, welcome. You're on the air. Oh, hello. I, I, I think uh, I may have said it wrong. The name's Ivan. I called yesterday about okay. the... Okay, uh, Ivan. Sorry. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I had a different question. I, I wanted to ask you, um, encountering um, um, Eastern Orthodox um, people, they they they, uh, they oppose sola scriptura. And before mm-hmm. I, I basically ask, um, I, I wanted to ask if there's any confession that you particularly hold to as a believer. Well, the one I hold to is the one I wrote. It's on um, the uh, statement of faith of karm and no statement of faith or the confession that i hold that i'm aware of you know really kind of gets those nuances i prefer but uh, the westminster confession of faith is pretty good and if i was to pick any one okay. of them it'd be that but i affirm the the um the charismatic gifts for today i don't know if the wcf does but i do so okay oh, okay so when when so do, would you hold to sola scriptura of course Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, in defending Sola Scriptura, um, 
when someone just attacks it, when someone attacks it, especially from the Eastern Orthodox, because they, they mm-hmm. say that it carries on through tradition and through the church. Um, uh-huh. What do you yeah. what do you usually bring them to? Uh, Here, let me try that this. They, they, they kind of use like, oh, go ahead. Okay, try this. Ask this. Okay, was there an infallible list of the Old Testament books found in the New Testament or the Old Testament? Nope, there wasn't, was there? So, uh, how do they know? How did the disciples know? And how did the Jews know what the inspired books were in the Old Testament? They didn't need a list, but it was there. Why do we need a list of the New Testament books? They didn't have a list of the Old Testament. They just believed what God had worked through the Jews. So what's wrong with that? Okay. Right. Are you- they, he does mention, like, one of the Eastern Orthodox guys that, I, that I've been meaning to talk to, he does mention that, like, in Second Thessalonians, when Paul says, like, teach, teach, uh, Hold fast. Hold teach fast all that I have. Yes, I, I'm very familiar. So if you go to CARM, there's a lot of information uh, on this kind of stuff there. But uh, what they they fail to understand, when you go to Second Thessalonians chapter 2, is uh, they don't read the context. And they're never going to read the context because if they did, they'd find out that it doesn't support what they want to say. So the tradition being spoken of in Second Thessalonians 2.15 is the tradition about the second coming of Christ. And that's what the context talks about. But the it's not Roman Catholic tradition. It's not Eastern Orthodox tradition. Paul had told the Thessalonians to stand firm, verse 15. Stand firm regarding what? Paul had been speaking about the return of Christ, that's in verse 1, and that they would be gathered together to Jesus. Paul had just told them not to be shaken that the day of the Lord had come, that's verse 2, that he was warned them not to be deceived, verse 3. He informed them that the apostasy would come first before the Antichrist, verses 3 and 4. He reminded them of what they had already told them, verse 5. Now that's really important because he'd already told them stuff. He verbally told them, and they were getting it wrong. Their oral tradition wasn't working. And it goes on, the Antichrist is being re- restrained, verse 6. The, uh, Paul said, stated the lawlessness has already, is already upon them, verses 7 through 10. And that God will send a deluding influence upon the lawless, but, uh, verses 11 through 12. And that um, it's all future. Christ was, had not yet returned. And Paul reassured them that they had not missed Christ's return by saying that they had been chosen by God for salvation, 2 Thessalonians 2.13. And had given, uh, and then the call to the gospel, verse 14. That's when he said, now hold fast to the tradition I told you. That's what he's talking about. But what the Eastern Orthodox will do is say, well, that means sacred tradition, the tradition of the church. No, it doesn't. Okay. So that's what's going on there, okay? Okay. Thank you very much. I'll check out your website. Appreciate you very much, Parm. Have a blessed day. All right, man. You too, Ivan. God bless, buddy. Okay. All right. Let's get to Ron from Wake Forest. Ron, welcome. You're on the air. Yes, sir. I had a quick question. I'm 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 reading through the book of Timothy, and okay. I came across First uh, Timothy, the second chapter, verse two. Okay, you know, hold on, man. We got a break. We got a break. Sorry. No, it's okay. It just now started. So hold on, and uh, we'll get back with you right after the break, and we'll we'll get into this. Okay, so hold on, buddy. Hey, folks, we'll be right back after these messages. If you want to give me a call, 877-207-2276. We'll be right back. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone, welcome back to the show. As soon as Ron's back on here, as soon as the producer clicks him on, we'll get back to him. Hey, just want to let you guys know that um, uh, Friday and Saturday, I will be in uh, Sandy, Utah, talking, uh, speaking at 5 o'clock on Friday. Uh, I'll be talking on... um, on uh, the Trinity, I was just thinking of a couple things, but I'll be speaking of the Trinity. If you want information on that, you can go to carm.org forward slash calendar, but you can also go to Utah Christian Research Center. 
dot com Utah Christian Research Center dot com and um, you can get all the information there but it's on uh, carm dot org forward slash uh, trinity trinity <laughs> carm dot org forward slash uh, calendar so I'll be there Friday night speaking and Sunday uh, Saturday morning at nine so uh, there you go so let people know okay let's get back on with Ron hey Ron but you're back on okay yes, go for it buddy hey sir I was like I said I've been studying uh, First Timothy and I came to call second, you know, second chapter where Paul talks about praying for those in authority and kings. I want to know uh, how does that latter part apply to us today? Cause I know you how the government is right now. Sure. Yeah, just for our the authorities above us, pray for them that we can live uh, live live a quiet and uh, god uh, godly life, tranquil life. We should pray for Biden, yes, even though he's a a commie sympathizer who's destroying our country. We should pray for him. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I got that part, but I was, I was just trying to understand what Paul was talking about. He says by leading, you know, leaving a quiet and a peaceful life. When we well, pray we for want these peace. The, what, the, one of the purposes right. of government is to secure the borders so that we have uh-huh. a, a coherent uh, country and that it provides safety so that businesses, commerce can occur, families can be raised, etc. This is what the, one of the main functions <laughs> of government is. And our government is not doing this. Our government's working against that. Yes, sir. So it, it is, mm-hmm. but we need to be praying for them. Okay. In fact, in fact, just to say this, people should be aware of what's going on. Um, I've heard from two different sources within two days now that uh, there is some serious concerns about uh, some attacks uh, in America, and um, right. So, uh, if you go to uh, like FoxNews dot com, it talks about it. And um, let's see, where is it? Uh, don't powder in case holding the, these climate activists, wacko morons. Jeez, yikes! <laughs> and, Buttheads. You know, I just saw a thing that says they're, they poured powder on the uh, U.S. Constitution, the, the container holding it. I mean, look at their, And you know what? They're all so young. They're so brainwashed. Their brains aren't even developed yet. Uh, you know, uh, yes, it just makes me sick. So anyway, um, back to the topic at hand. Uh, a sheriff who went to a national sheriff's co- uh, conference, and uh, also I read this morning about uh, the... Uh, I forget who it was, the Department of Defense or somebody. Anyway, they're at, they're, they're saying that uh, there's evidence and words of some major serious stuff coming down. Now, mm-hmm. this makes sense because the Biden um, regime, the Biden uh, cabal, has uh, opened up the uh, Biden crime families, what I call them, opened up the borders, and everybody's come in. And you know the enemies of our country are sending in people. Yes, sir just sending them in uh-huh. and all they have to do this is not new but all they have to do is get weapons and go on a designated day go to different places in the country and shoot out um, uh, electrical power grid of transformers in certain areas they have centralized areas you can get also with uh, fuel uh, production and within That's a it. short period of time that the, the uh, American economy will be basically tanked so right. uh, and then what I'm concerned about is that if something like this happens, that the Biden a crime family, what they will do is suspend all uh, elections and then put us under martial law. And if that happens, it's over. We won't, we'll never get it back. Right. And I suspect right. at that point there'd be a civil war on our own, uh, our second civil war. That's what I'm not wanting. Yes, sir. This is, it's serious right. stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on. So, uh, yes, sir. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, how should we pray for these people like in this situation? I know Paul oh. tells us, but what's... Mm-hmm. No. Sorry. We pray for their salvation. I prayed for Biden and uh, the people in Congress and Senate, and and uh, my wife and I have nightly prayers, and, uh, you know, I prayed for them uh, more than once. You know, Lord, please save them. Uh, and I yeah, asked, I Lord, you know, if, yeah, if you're not going to save them, Lord, by your grace, then deal with them according to their sin. It's called an imprecatory yes, prayer. And these are okay. in the Psalms, where God says, where the psalmist says to God, deal with them. 
deal with them to, according to their unrighteousness, to stop the evil that they're perpetrating upon others. And that's one of the things we're obligated to do as Christians is to stand in the way of harm coming to the, to others. So, you know, it's, it's what it is. Okay. okay. I saw it. Well, thank you, because like I said, I've been studying. I just trying to figure what he was meaning by that last part. Yeah. Okay. That's what it is. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, God bless, man. All right. Hey, if you guys want to give me a call, all I got to do is dial 877 Jason from Salt Lake City. Welcome. Well, uh, you're on the air. Hey, Matt. I just uh, had a question, uh, given it's Valentine's Day, about love and the talking point uh, that typically comes from Arminians concerning mm -hmm. uh, the idea that our love for God or vice versa, or love for others, couldn't be genuine if it is uh, predetermined one way or another. And I was curious what your thoughts are on that. Well, the people who would raise that objection don't understand who God is. I like to ask them questions. Does God know everything? Yes. Is he in control of everything? I want to know what their view of God is. Since he says in Ephesians yeah. one eleven, God works all things after the counsel of his will. Does he? Does that include free will? Are they, are they, are, is free will somehow autonomous from God and acts independently from God so he doesn't have sovereignty in all areas? What, they, don't, they don't know what they're doing half the time. I'm sorry, but they don't. They don't think these things through. If they're going to say that God is sovereign over all their areas and that all things actual as well as potential only exist within a causal chain that traces its back, itself back to the initial uh, work of God, let there be light. When God created the world and the universe, then he set in motion everything that's going to occur in it. We have free will within, within that because, well, that's, we're made in his image. And we have that free will. But it doesn't mean we're autonomous from God or God doesn't know what we're going to do or think or choose. And he can bring about whatever he desires within our hearts. As he says in uh, Proverbs 21, 1, he moves the heart of the king where he wishes it to go. And he can certainly move what true love is into our hearts. Another thing that they do, they make mistakes, is they'll say, well, it's not true love if, blah, blah, blah. I say, okay, show me that definition of what love is. Where do you get this idea of what love is? Are you in touch with some cosmic, transcendental, neoplatonic, abstract entity called love, and that you're the one who's in contact with it, and you know what it really is? Tell me what it is. Where's your authority to say what love is? And if it's outside the scriptures, then I'm not going to listen to you because you don't have any grounding. So I want to know what it is, and so you're going to have to go from Scripture. So show me what love is from Scripture. Show me where it has to be what you say. Because these people are arrogant. They're arrogant when they talk like this. They don't understand what they're doing. Oh, yeah. So much heresy, so little time. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, Jason. We'll be right back after these messages. Please stay tuned. Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Everyone, thanks for holding and waiting and listening. And let's get back to Jason from Salt Lake City. All right, Jason, you know, I'm going to be down there uh, on Friday, Friday evening and Saturday, and coming back on Sunday. So no big deal. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so I've I've uh, I found that love argument to kind of fall flat scripturally, but I was just curious uh, what your mm -hmm. thoughts on it were, uh, given that it tends to tie into their argument concerning, you know, if if man doesn't have the ability to make a contrary choice, um, particularly concerning salvation, then man can't be morally responsible for spurning okay. the grace of God if he doesn't have that. That is capacity, found. But that, that's that's uh that's found in the the first book of stupidification. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because what people do so many times is that they just assume they understand what true love really needs to be. Now they don't realize that they're arrogant. They say, "I know what it really is. I know what love is, and I'll tell you." And that's why your interpretation of God's word can't be true because of the view that I hold. And I say to them, show me your view in Scripture, please. And they can't. I say, then you need to stop 
elevating your own personal opinions to the level by which you then judge other Christians. You need to stop that. This, there's a stern rebuke to them, but they need to stop it. I have to rebuke people every now and then, you know, stop it. So that's what's going on, all right? Thank here's, you. Here's something to think about. Here's something to think about, too. This is another something I'll, I'll talk to them. I'll say, look, was Jesus loving? Yes. Did Jesus love the Father? Yes. Did Jesus come to do the will of the Father? Yes. But Jesus says, I can do nothing of my own will. Only what he sees the Father do. John 5, 19, John 5, 30. So how was Jesus loving, loving the Father, if he could only do what the Father ordained for him to do? If you listen closely, that's when you can hear the wheels just vibrate and fall off the cart. Okay? They don't want to do with that. All right? Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. I, I do get tired of... I'm sorry I do. You know, I get a little exasperated sometimes because I, I, I talk a lot online. I, I'm always, you know, uh, not always, but I mean frequently. I, I'm three, four, five hours a, uh, a week uh, just talking in various chat rooms, sometimes six, seven hours a week because I, I do it in the evenings. And um, I'm, I'm regularly meeting people who just claim to have insight knowledge from God himself. And, okay, show me in Scripture. And they can't. Well, it's either tradition, or God told me this, or God told me that. And I'm sitting there going, why don't you listen to God's Word, and why don't you judge according to what God has said? And they don't want to do that. And I think it's because, well, I don't know, get into that. So I call them on the carpet, ask them to find it in Scripture. They can't do it. Then I politely tell them, please, if you can't find it in God's Word, then is it biblical? What's your position biblical? And they don't have any uh, real response to that. Okay? All right. Yeah, it seems like the uh, the argument comes before the Scripture, and then they go to the Scripture to try and find a way to justify it, as opposed to mm -hmm. going to Scripture and saying, you know, this is right. truth, and then coming underneath it. That's right. It happens a lot. People trample the Word of God under their feet. And uh, the Catholics do it. Uh, the Catholic Church does it. The Eastern Orthodox uh, Church does it. A lot of Protestants do it. Arminians do it. Some Calvinists do it. Okay, so there's all kinds of people. We're not exempt. Uh, you know, we have to be careful. But I've got this habit now over the years I've developed of what does it say in the Word, not what do I think it says in the Word. What does it say? And that's what I want to know. I want to know what it says in the Word tell me from God's Word. That's the standard. And too many people are simply ignoring that standard and developing their own. And so you got to point it out. All right? That's better do. Okay? Thanks. All right. All right, buddy. God bless, Jason. Okay. All right. And uh, by the way, thanks, Crusader for Christ 99. Thanks for the, I guess, two uh, $5 rants. Uh, that means that's on Rumble, so that uh, if you guys want to watch, watch me sit here and do the show. It's not a big deal, but the participate. Actually, what's really good is you participate with the people in the chat room in Rumble. That's really good. That that's, makes it worthwhile. And so there's some great folks in there. We have 66 watching right now there and nine someplace else, and uh, it comes and goes, but uh, that's what it is at this time of the day. And uh, so you can... You can chat. You just go to rumble.com forward slash Matt Slick Live. That's all you got to do. Let's get to Herb. 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 <laughs> Herb. <laughs> I, <laughs> From Raleigh. I was prepared for that this time. I said, I know what Matt's going to say. And he, and he did. I messed up. <laughs> Well, at least you're oh, consistently man. messing up. <laughs> I know. And as soon as I said it, I go, what am I doing that again for? <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, Matt. So what do you got? <laughs> well... A friend of mine, he's about our age, in his mid-60s. He's in a Sunday school class at church. And we got to talking by chance the other day about cremation. And his father, when he was young, was cremated. I don't know the, the details, you know, what everything happened and, and decided his father was doing this. But his this man is very distraught or very down about did his father make it to uh, to heaven being cremated? 
And I told him I feel surely he did based on everything I've ever learned, you know, as a Christian. And I told him, I said, but you know what? I'm going to call a gentleman named Matt Slick on the radio and see what he thinks about this and see if there's any verses that might could help this gentleman feel more, you know, comfortable and confident that his father is, is in heaven because he was a Christian. Okay. Uh, so he's thinking then that because he was cremated, he might not have made it to heaven? Is yeah. That, okay. And I tried so to what, explain to him, yeah, I don't, there's no way the gentleman would not have gone to heaven because look at the airplane crashes. Look at, you know, so many horrible ways that people die mm -hmm. with not their choosing. But mm -hmm. I, I just told him, and, and maybe I'm wrong, you can correct me, but I said, you know, it doesn't matter how you die. Your soul is still with God. And you're with his, your father, I feel sure, is, you know, is, is with God if he was a true Christian. And cremation, I don't think, would keep him out of heaven. Uh, he seems to think it's a pagan thing that the pagan people used to do years ago. And that's why he's, you know, thinking God won't forgive his father. Okay. So, um there's some logic problems. If it's pagan in origin, it doesn't mean it's not uh, usable. The Christmas trees, uh, you know, are pagan in origin. And First, Tem First Corinthians 10, uh, there's meat sacrificed to idols, and Paul says you can eat it. Okay, the origin of that is uh, by sacrifice to demonic forces. But you can eat it. It's not going to hurt you. So uh, yeah. the idea of cremation, even if it was from, uh, uh, you know, a pagan source, whatever, which I don't buy, I don't buy that. It doesn't have any bearing on a person's salvation. Uh, we're saved by grace through faith and our trust in Christ, not whether or not we get cremated. And uh, yeah. you're exactly right. Plane crashes. I was thinking nukes. What do you do with nu nuclear uh, bombs? What do you do with someone who's caught in a building and it's so hot and, and they, they burn up? Oh, can it? I'm sorry, they can't go to heaven now. Their body was burned up. It doesn't right. work like that. And so just tell him, no, if his father trusted in Christ, that's the guarantee of salvation because we can't lose our salvation because we're in Christ. And that's it. Okay? Yeah. And there's no no verse in the Bible that states that, is there? That states that their cremation is going to keep you out of heaven. Or, you know, is a right. thing. Nothing. Oh, no, no, no. Nothing like that. What about people okay. who are buried at sea? And what oh. about people who, who uh, there's some cultures where they bury people in trees. For real, they bury yeah. in trees, and so uh, they have a way of doing it. It was really fascinating <laughs> when I found out about it. They stick a pole yeah. up them and put put them in a tree. And that's their burial. Well, sorry, what? It's pagan, so they can't go to heaven now. If that's how someone's buried, or buried at sea, or cremated, or what if you are embalmed or not embalmed? Yeah. What? Well, that's so right. it. Yeah, it just doesn't. Uh, it, it don't. You're right. Okay. It has to do with the well, soul. Yeah. Not the body, and God what? will, God, and also think about this. What about people who died four thousand years ago? Their bodies are completely gone. With the same result as cremation, gone. Yeah, that doesn't mean that. And your soul, your body disintegrates in the grave, and there's nothing yes. left. Same That's result right. after the cremation is done. So, I, I'm, I'm, I was. I was very shocked that he felt this way at his age, given he is a Christian and he teaches our class regularly. You know, he's a, definitely a devout, strong Christian and yeah. a good man, but I was just shocked that he even yeah. thought such a thing. But I said, I wanted to yeah. get to your feelings, see if there's anything I could tell him. So, yeah, you, you are you're on the right back. track. And someone in the chat said, what about someone, a man who gets eaten by a shark? What about them? Right. You know, that's, that's true, right. Hey, you, you, that's right. Or and falls into can, a wood chipper, can, which has happened. Hey, look, there's <laughs> there's the music. There's the music. We got to go, buddy. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, all right, man. Bless, Matt. Thank God you bless. so much. All right. Okay, hey, folks, we'll be right back after these messages on this cheery topic. We'll be right back. Please stay tuned. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the show. Let's get on the air with Andrew from Ohio. Andrew, welcome. You're on the air, buddy. Hey, how's it going? It's going. It's going. What do you got, man? Um, I was wondering if you could uh, riff a little bit on uh, the terms, the word, 
uh, and then Christ and Scripture and kind of like the, the definitions of each and how they overlap and what's different about them because, we, you know, we're always sure. saying like, you know what I mean, right? How yeah. how they sure. kind of used differently, but they mean different things, but they don't mean what everybody thinks they mean and, you know. Especially the, you know, the difference or the difference of the similarities that overlaps between Scripture and the Word, and then obviously Christ, you know, being the Word. So, mm-hmm. and that's all I had. And I was just wondering if you could talk about that for a little while. Sure. Um, first of all, we define words by their context. So each word has a semantic domain. It has a range of meanings that are applied to it in the context in which it's used. So. The word uh, Jesus is actually used in uh, other senses that are not in reference to the person of Jesus as we know him, but also to uh, others like Jacob in the New Testament. So the word Jesus has different meanings. A lot of people do not know this, but it's true. So, for example, the word Jesus in, in Greek is in the Strong's Concordance is number 2424. So if I were to do a search for 2424, and I can find these verses, it occurs 914 times. And yet, I'm trying to look for the ones that has the word Jacob there. And uh, it, sometimes it's, it's translated that way because that's how it's used. Just so you know, a lot of, a lot of people are not familiar with that. I can, see I can find them. As I sc- uh, scan through, oh, excuse me, got a yawn coming on. Oh, there's so many for me to look, so I can't look through 900 of them while we're talking. All right, so that's one thing. And, oh, did we lose them? Hello? I guess we lost them. And so uh, the word word occurs in many places as well. So in John 1.1, 1, 1, the word word is in reference to God. And then and the word became flesh, it's reference to Jesus. But sometimes the word word can mean other things. So all I have to do is go through. I have this great Bible program, you see. All I have to do is go through and just type in the Strong's Concordance uh, equivalent to what it is. The word word, 331 times it is used. And in the NASB 95, it's saying... It can be translated as reason, as statement, as word, as accounting. Uh, Let's see, some other versions. Um, What someone said. It can be as a story, as news, as an answer. Uh, Other translations, as things, as a message. So there we have what's called a semantic domain. We have a range of meanings that uh, the word, word, logos, goes through. And here's another one, utterance, speech. This is how the NASB is translating it uh, in different places. And the word appearance is from Lagos. Yeah, you see? So there's that. All right. And then there's when we have scripture. Now that's different. All right. Because if we go to Second Thessal- uh, Second Timothy 3.16, it says all scripture. Now that's the word graphe. Graphe is from what it means to be a written something. And this is significant because uh, sometimes uh, the Catholics and these Orthodox say Scripture is also the non-written word. But every time the word uh, Scripture uh, is graphe is used, uh, and I'm looking through, let's see, 51 results, every single one of them is translated into the English as Scripture. And then what you do is you see how it's used. Do you ever read the scriptures? The stone was uh, rejected by the builders. That's the Old Testament. Do you understand the scriptures? So it's referring to the written word of God every single time. And uh, that's really interesting. So there you go. And so words have a range of meaning depending on the context in which they're used. Hope that helps. Let's get to Chris from North Carolina. Chris, welcome. You're on the air. Matt, what's shaking, bacon? <laughs> uh, just radio right now. That's it, man. What do you got, buddy? Well, I just uh, more or less to follow up to your previous caller who mm-hmm. was asking about praying for our current leadership, if you want to call it that. Uh-huh. Yeah. And um, 
you were talking about you had heard uh, about some attacks or whatever that might be coming down the pike yep. um, and being and martial law being declared and uh, I was wondering about, yeah. what your thoughts were on the fact that what if they were to allow the election or the voting to take place but before the peaceful transfer of power uh, if Biden didn't get in uh, then we would have the attack and martial law be declared. Uh, you never know. Uh, it, it might yeah, be. Yeah. Um, I, I just don't trust the uh, the left. I, I believe that they're in the service of the all. evil one. I believe they're antichrist. I believe they are a lot of the left. Okay, not all, of them. Uh, particularly the ones yeah, who are on the TV. And the, government. Hand, the radical. Yeah, the radical left. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good way to put it. So uh, there are just so many uh, people who hate the Constitution, who uh, want to promote homosexuality, abortion, fornication, moral relativism. They want to open the borders up, let it be flooding in, printing money as though it doesn't really matter anymore, devaluing our wages uh, in the process, causing our, um, our the prices to, to go up. These are, these are the things a government does when it is trying to destroy a country. This is exactly yeah, what you do I mean, if you want to destroy the country. If you had an enemy who's in control of America and want to do it slowly, that's what you do. So, well, you know, there was a guy the crime family. on the radio yeah. from, yeah, from right. Russia, and he was saying exactly what's going on now. Mm -hmm. He said this started, um, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, he said that, you know, that was... That was how they were taught when he was in the KGB, mm -hmm. is that, you know, you overthrow it, you have to do it slowly, step by step. Yeah. And, you know, you go in and you start with the children. You mm -hmm. change their mind, and then over time, because mm -hmm. uh, who was it? that uh, oh, yeah, one the, the youth are... One you of the Russian brainwashed. leaders years ago said they were going to take oh. America and never fire a yeah. shot. Yeah, I think it was Brezhnev. No, it was uh, Stalin. I, I can't remember, but absolutely. Yeah. In fact, on my website, I have the 45 goals of communism. And it, it's okay. written there. And this is what... Karm.org, the 45 goals okay. of communism. And it was... Uh, the 45 goals were first published in March of 1961 in the, the Naked Communist. These goals were read into the congressional record by Albert S. Herlong on January 10, 1963. They are the stated means by which the communist Russia would overthrow the United States. I'm going to read some of them to you. Capture one or both of the political parties in the U.S. Well, they definitely have the left. The Democrats, definitely. Get yeah. control of the schools. Use them as a transmission for socialism and current communist propaganda. Soften the curriculum. Get control of the teachers' associations. That's absolutely the case. Infiltrate the press. Well, CNN, MSNBC, I mean, they're leftist rags, you know. Gain control yeah, of key positions exactly. in radio, TV, motion pictures. That's right. Discredit American culture by degrading all forms of artistic expression. Uh, let's see. Here's some other ones. Em eliminate all laws governing obscenity by calling them censorship. Uh, break down cultural standards of morality by pr promoting pornography, obscenity, and books. This is done to our children, right? Magazines, motion pictures, exactly. radio, TV. Present homosexuality, degeneracy, and promiscuity as normal and natural and healthy. Infiltrate the churches, replace revealed religion with social religion. That's happening. Eliminate prayer or any phase of religious expression in the schools. Discredit the American Constitution by calling it inadequate, old-fashioned, out of step. Discredit the American Founding Fathers. Uh, I'm not even reading all of them. Belittle all forms of American culture and discourage the teaching of American history on the ground that it's only a minor part of the big picture. Support any socialist movement to give centralized control over any part of the culture, education, social agencies, welfare, welfare programs, mental health clinics, etc. In other words, get the government to be in control of them, which is what's happened. Yeah, I'm Discredit and, and eventually dismantle... Listen to this. Hold on. Discredit and eventually okay. dismantle the FBI. Well, the FBI is now discredited. I don't trust the FBI. 
infiltrate no. and get gain control of big business. And they're obviously leftist. Transfer some of the powers of arrest from the police to social agencies. They were trying that in um, in, wa- in uh, Washington State. New- Discredit the family okay. as an institution. That's why they say the word, instead of wife and husband, they say partner. And Christians are now adopting yeah. the pagan uh, system. Emphasize the need to raise children away from the negative influence of parents. Create the impression that violence and insurrection are legitimate aspects of the American tradition. Okay? So Done. there's I mean, some of the stuff that's going on. That. Yeah, there, and there's I mean, more. You put a check mark by all of that because I uh-huh. think it was in 65 when they uh, right. put prayer out of school. That's right. Um, so and, our country is, the, the way it's I going, had, it's going to fall. Our country is lost. This kind of stuff isn't something we just slide through. This is the kind of thing that once it's in place, our country will be destroyed from inside. And then other nations will come in and take the spoil from our country. They yeah. will confiscate. I mean, and one of the things they do, when they when the history teaches us, they confiscate weapons and then they kill or imprison the intelligentsia. That means they don't like will be imprisoned and or punished and or killed. This is what Mao Zedong did. This is what Stalin did. This is what uh, Hitler did. And so, yeah, you know, I, this is what's I, happening. Yeah, I, I warn people, but who am I? You know, I'm a guy named Slick I mean, on the radio. You you're, you're, you're the intelligentsia. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm well, I've already been swatted, and, and, uh, and my wife and I talk about the knock at the door and really? they come and take me away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've never read in the Bible where God punished a nation for the sins of an individual, but he punishes the nation for the sins of the government. And, you know, America has been trying for years to kick Actually, God out. And I he did. He did. I finally see him take his hand to protect him off of us. Well, actually, God did this uh, uh, nation for the sins of, of uh, one man. It's, we numbered Israel. David numbered Israel. We shouldn't have. Okay. We sent yeah. a plague. So I'm just te- being technically correct. But yeah, I get you. Yeah. And uh, if the Christians, uh, look, we can appeal to the unbelievers. Hey, get better. <laughs> Forget it. They don't care. They're just too busy watching uh, the football game. And uh, in the pagan churches, they're kicking uh, the Bible as a football uh Thing, to get people in for football, this and that. They're just a lot of churches are just in bed with the enemy, and and have women pastors exactly. and elders. You know what I teach is Bible, and people don't want it. Yeah, yes, well, sir. A lot of people do, but yeah, there we go. Okay, well, we're out of time. Here. There's the music. I hear the music, oh, yeah. Matt. Thank you, sir, man. All right, Bye. <laughs> all right, man. God bless. Hey, folks. There you go. Hope you enjoyed the show, and by God's grace, we're back on there tomorrow. And may the Lord bless you, and we'll talk to you then. Have a great evening, everyone. God bless. Bye. Another program powered by the Truth Network.